welcome to my little late review of Haikyuu chapter 231, Beginnings and Happenings. And I think I really like this title because it's kind of like nudge to the beginning that was called Endings and Beginnings, I'm pretty sure. So I thought that was really nice. Um, overall, I actually found that despite all the things that happened in this chapter, um, it was quite simple. Uh, I've been thinking about this chapter a lot and read it a couple times just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. But I feel like we mostly just got like uh, a tease of a lot of characters. So we had uh, the Niyama girls. Um, we find out the girl that Tanaka knows and um, that's basically it. I'm expecting them to play a bit more of a role. I've been discussing with one of you that Kagyama might know. One of the Niyama girls, uh, someone said that his sister or something might be on that team. Um, I don't know how likely that is now after this chapter since no one spoke to each other. So I don't know, but I st I'm still, I, I, I want there to be someone that someone else knows. So it's not just Tanaka, because I feel like they're going to play a different role. But now that the girls team, like the Karasuno girls team is not there anymore. Because obviously they lost. Um, I don't know what their role will be, but we'll see. It could. It would be really fun if they had like uh, a training match against them uh, or a practice match, just because we've not seen like mixed genders. Like, yeah, I think that would be fun. Just because I feel like girls would have a different approach because, like, they're from the get-go not as physically strong, so they have to rely on other things, so I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I think that, that'd be fun, but I want to know more about them, because I feel like, I find it really interesting that we've been, like, hyping up and exploring this girl's team that is not, like, we've had Karasuno's team, but that was, like, a fun parallel, I feel like, but this one has been hyped up because they're the queens and all that stuff, we're, but obviously we're never gonna play them because it's the girl's team, so I find that really interesting. Um, we also have Kagema kind of uh, catching up with the people he met at his training camp, and we have the <laughs> number one libero. Um, I thought that was really funny when I think it was Daichi who was like, "Oh, I read about him. He's like the number one libero in a power school." And you just have Nishinoya going, "What did you say?" <laughs> I thought it was really funny, but it's nice to see Kagema like interacting with people, and we find out that Tsukasa, Tsukasa, uh, Sakusa. Um, Sakasa. Wrong anime. Um, Sakasa is, um, he hates crowds, extreme introvert. Uh, <laughs> but that's, I, I, yeah, I, I'm really interested in seeing how he is in battle because I feel like we've just seen the really awkward side of him and then we've heard that he's really good but we've not really seen him play. Like, I think we've seen like one or two spikes from him, but he's like supposedly the second best spiker, right? Um, so yeah, I'm really interested in seeing that. Uh, then we have, of course, some interactions with uh, Nekoma, mostly just Kuro, and we have Hinata and Bokuto meeting again, and it's all very nice. Um, it's pretty much confirmed at this point that neither their first nor second match will be against either like Nekoma or Fukurodani, because I feel like that would have been uh, like emphasized. Like, if, it was the if it was the first match, they would ob obviously have been discussing it, and if, if it had been the second, they would be like, oh, if we both win our first match, we'll face each other after that or something. So I feel like... Uh, yeah, we we don't kind of know, and I also like that because Pokuto said to Hinata, if there's ever a net again, uh, between us, I won't hold back or something like that. So that would make it seem like if they had to meet, it would be very late in the game. Like, literally, like, they are, must be in completely different blocks. Um, so yeah, I still have my doubts as to whether or not Karasuno will face Fukurorani in this season at the very least. Um, just because I, and even if they did, I, they wouldn't win. I, I seriously doubt that. Um, but I've discussed this before, so let's not go into that. Uh, then we have, uh, basically, we have the the beginning of the tournament where all the schools, they are presented. And we have, like, this thing where they walk around and stuff like that. But because they're not, uh, there are a lot of matches, I'm presuming, and they don't have, like, a thousand courts. And they probably, like... It's an audience, audience thing, so you would like for people to be able to watch these different matches. Um, so I think they have like, they showed us those four courts, but I'm pres I presume they, there could be more, or maybe they just have like a different place for the girls volleyball well, teams, I don't know. But either way, Kalasno doesn't play in the first two uh, rounds or whatever, which means that they will go do their warm-up in another place, so they take the train there and they have 
there are some issues with the train being like stopping and then them having to go over to the thing and taking a bus and stuff like that. Um, and it's basically just to emphasize that they're getting that they're nervous because they're like, oh my god, we can't get the train when it's like literally they have to walk for like four minutes and then there's a bus and stuff like that. Um, but I find it interesting also that even with the nerves being displayed, like even from the beginning where Kuro and Samamura, Samamura, oh my god, that <laughs> Kuro and Daichi they're kind of teasing each other, being like uh, nervous. We have uh, Takeda being like, they seem less nervous than yesterday, like, they, it seems like they've gotten their nerves under control and they are make, move, blah, they are making less wasted moves and stuff like that. So even if they seem really nervous, they are still like, they're not breaking down completely, like, as we, for example, saw in the beginning of the show, turns out a match where it was just like, a complete mess, like, a complete fucking mess. Um, but of course the big drama is when they go back and at some point Hinata has gotten the wrong bag and now he doesn't have his shoes because obviously they have to change shoes between when they go outside and inside and all that. Outside, yeah. Um, so that's the big drama of that and it's like epic stalling. Like, <laughs> now they won't have Hinata until they find the bag where that, that he mysteriously like, uh, not forgot but like exchange with someone else and it's probably like 100% gonna be someone who is in that volleyball thing because they were a lot of volleyball players going back and forth, I presume. So question is just like, it would be super ironic if he like accidentally uh, exchanged bags with like their opponent's team or something. Um, but I feel like that he might just have like like the first set or something just run around the entire like stadium and just <laughs> try to find out who has his bag. Because if you look at the contents of the the bag, like, he wasn't like, okay, this is, like, literally all so different, he was like, it looks a little different first, um, so it might, like, there might be some ID or something in that bag, who knows, um, because the other person must be looking for their bag as well, um, but it's gonna be interesting because, of course, this is setting up that he not won't be, he can't, um, participate in the first, uh, part of the match because, literally, he doesn't have any shoes, and, he has small feet, I guess, and if, like, if he had to, like, steal shoes from someone else, it would have to be Nishinoya, but they can't really take out their libero, like, I would say that Nishinoya is more essential to the team than Hinata is, um, so, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I find that interesting that we're gonna start off with Hinata not being able to play, but that's, like, also kind of a setup for, for Karasuno just not being able to go all out from the from the get-go, which would then set them up to win at least one or two matches. Um, I think they'll get past the first two matches, um, because it'd be really sad if they just lost, like, now. Um, I feel like they will lose against the team we know, and of course I'm for Nakuma, but yeah. At the very least, I think they should make it to Nakuma. I think that's basically what I have to say, because the chapter was just really simple. Um, which is nice, good short reviews are needed sometimes. Um, but yeah, if you liked anything that I had said, please leave a thumbs up in the video, leave it in the comments below what you thought of this chapter, and if you want to see more of me, you can subscribe. Until next time, bye!